Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. My name is Kyusun. Yan Yan and I lead the CUI attribution efforts at Google. Today, I have the privilege to share the works that we did with these folks with you. So what is a CUI attribution? Before I tell you that, let me take you to November 11th, 2020, the day that YouTube was down. This incident log shows what had happened during the first 15 minutes. To quickly summarize, alert after alert, escalation after escalation, we start freezing everything that was being rolled out, and people start reporting anything that looks suspicious. Eventually, one of them is confirmed to be a root cause, all within 15 minutes. I think this incident was handled incredibly well. It is a very good example of decisiveness and focus. At the same time, I cannot stop thinking how chaotic it must have felt, almost as if we were shooting in the dark. On the very same night, I was informed that YouTube doesn't work by my wife. <laughs> I reluctantly agreed to look into when the service will be restored. And that is when I remembered that my team, CUI attribution team, built a tool that visualizes the system topology along with the system performance overlaid. It is a tool that we used to find overwhelming considering the complexity of the systems that we have. But I thought I'd give it a try. I opened up the tool, selected the YouTube main app as a product, and watched as an interaction to display. And this is what I saw. Usually, there are too many services to display, so by default, we group them by product areas or PAs. Every edge indicates RPCs from services in one PA to services in another PA. The color of the edge indicates error ratio and the thickness, the QPS. Now, I don't know much about YouTube, and probably neither do you, but we can still make pretty good guesses. One, YouTube is probably in trouble. Two, there's something wrong in product area X. Three, service X in particular looks pretty suspicious. We just came up with these guesses without any domain expertise about YouTube and all within a minute or two. 15 minutes for YouTube experts and two minutes, all we knew was YouTube and watch was broken. That was the moment that we realized that we have something special. Today, I'm going to share what it was that we had so that you can have the same if you wish. And I'm going to share how this is gradually transforming Google so that hopefully we can all together transform the industry. Before I share what it was that we had, let me begin with why it is hard to debug an issue that is caused by a service multiple hops away. Let's say that your request begins at server B, then flows through C, E, and F. To F, every request it is receiving is from server E. It does not know the existence of server B, just like a server B does not know the existence of server F. With no more server metrics, you can distinguish the performance among the immediate callers and immediate callees, but you really cannot trace it further upstream or downstream. With the distributed tracing, a unique ID is propagated along with the request. Then every server that receives the request sends detailed information to the observability backend keyed by the unique ID. With that, we can construct a complete chain of events in a view like this. But this view only gives you the visibility into single request at a time, limiting its practicability. On one hand, we have one hop visibility for all the requests that the server sees. On another hand, we have an end-to-end -end visibility for a single request at a time. What we need, though, is a bit of both. We need an end-to-end -end visibility for a set of requests. So we came up with what is now known as a CUI, Critical User Interaction Attribution. 
First, we asked individual product teams to identify their request with a metadata that we call CUI. It is essentially a string that indicates what end-user product it is from and what kind of user interaction it is for. For example, if the request is for users to watch a video on YouTube, then the string could be YouTube slash watch. Then this information is passed through the stack as a propagating metadata known as a baggage. Baggage is a key value pairs that is propagated along with the request and it is already supported by distributed tracing solutions. Then lastly, we gather the system performance metrics such as latency and error ratio broken down by this metadata from every server that the request go through. It is a beautifully simple idea that any users of distributed tracing solutions could easily adopt. With that, we can distinguish the system performance by the metadata, in our case, critical user interaction, from every server. For example, we can ask as server F to check the performance of a particular CUI that may have been started multiple hops away. Also, if you gather the system performance broken down by source and destination per edge per CUI, like B2C, C2E, and E2F, then you can reconstruct the system topology for a particular CUI like the one that you saw earlier offering per CUI end-to-end -end visibility. Night and day differences. Previously, we had a flashlight that offered one hop visibility or per request visibility in a pitch black darkness. Suddenly, light is on. With a tool like this, we could see how the outage started from product area X and gradually propagated to the YouTube, just like a seismic wave from an earthquake gradually propagates to the surface over time. So how is this gradually transforming Google? Let's say that you hired a new person on your team how do you plan to train the person for an outage like the one that we saw? I'm sure a lot of thoughts are going through your mind, and I bet you don't like any of them. <laughs> you probably have thought of something like this, though. First, confirm the outage on the server, like YouTube, and then check its immediate backends. If every backend looks okay, then the server itself is likely to be a, a problem. If there is a backend with a similar pattern of errors, then the errors are likely to be coming from that backend. So repeat the process from that backend. We wish this kind of a systematic approach to work so much, but it doesn't. A C is job B returning error. B believes that the errors are actually coming from its backends. However, B doesn't have any means to tell whether A's errors in particular are coming from C or D because it is also serving easy request. After mere one hop, we already lost the thread of requests. Not with the CUI attribution. Because we propagate a metadata called the CUI along with the request, on every server, we exactly know what is the error ratio for this CUI. What does this mean, though? Does that mean that the systematic approach that we just saw could actually work? Does that mean that we can use that process to debug an issue that is caused by a service multiple hops away? We tested it. We saw job A starting to return about one QPS of errors for CUI X. Checking its immediate backend, we found a similar pattern of errors coming from job B for the same CUI. Traditionally, this is where you give up and page on call for job B, who probably can't help you very much anyway. But with the CUI attribution, we were able to trace to job C and then job D which was the root cause. All these servers, job A through job D, 
They handle more than millions of QPS each. Yet we were able to trace one QPS of, of errors starting from job A all the way down to job D. As it turns out, we can find the needle in the haystack if you thread the needle with a propagating tag like CUI. So let's talk about one more thing about the same outage. Would it be possible to test the potential impact of service X on YouTube? The answer is yes, but here's a dilemma. You definitely want to test this in production because you know it's almost impossible to set up a testing environment that looks like this. At the same time, you don't want to test this in production because it may break user traffic. Could we experiment such failure in production safely? First, the unsafe way would be to break service X unconditionally in production. We just wanted to test the relationship between service X and YouTube, but by breaking service X in production unconditionally, we may be breaking everything that depends on service X. Could we limit the blast radius to YouTube, for example? Since we are propagating a metadata called the CUI, on service X, we could read this metadata and fail the user traffic for a particular CUI only without touching any other user traffic. This is certainly better. Now we can limit the impact to YouTube or a particular CUI. But could we do better and try to avoid the breaking user traffic. What if we copy the user request for certain CUI and replay it with one additional propagating metadata to indicate that this traffic is for an experiment? Then on service X, we could inject forge targeting both metadata, one for CUI and another one for the experiment and observe the impact on the experiment traffic without touching user traffic at all. With a scheme like this, we could test the criticality of not just a direct backend, but also indirect backend. With a scheme like this, we could evaluate the sensitivity of the front end on the latency increase of the backend multiple hops away, all in production while minimizing the impact to the user traffic. So many possibilities. So many possibilities appear by propagating a piece of metadata, such as CUI, and gathering the metrics by the metadata. So many opportunities become available by simply leveraging a baggage mechanism that is already available in distributed tracing solutions. Possibilities and opportunities are what lies beyond distributed tracing. Earlier, I quite ambitiously called for an action to transform the industry together. Shall we? Once again, my name is Kyusun, and thank you very much for your time and attention.